Welcome to Physics Office Hours. Today we're going to figure out how the Dirac equation leads to antimatter. If you remember our two factors we got from the energy-momentum relationship, and we chose this one by convention to get the Dirac equation. Well, looking only at the time component and not the momentum, setting the momentum to zero, we get this equation right here. The gamma matrix for the time component is just a 2 by 2 matrix made up of 2 by 2 matrices. This psi is a Dirac 4 spinner, has four components. We're going to split it up into two, psi A and psi B. We're going to apply this and get two first order differential equations. We're going to solve those first order differential equations and get psi a and psi b. They're each going to be, look like an exponent with minus i mc squared over h bar times t. This looks like the energy eigenvalues applied to some Hamiltonian. What is that energy? E equals mc squared for psi a and E equals minus mc squared for psi b. Does this mean if we have this as matter and this as, as antimatter, that antimatter has negative mass? Turns out that's not the case. Find out why next time. I'll see you there. 